All right, welcome back to another video, another Crown Vic video. In this one, we're going to be modifying part of the suspension. So, common complaint, the 98 2002 Crown Vic, especially the earlier ones, was that, and I should say especially on the non-police models, is the rear springs, especially with time, start to sag, and the rear end of the car is lower than the front end of the car and it's an undesirable look and it you know to me it just doesn't work out very well so an easy upgrade is to put on a set of ford oem springs from a later model police interceptor so that's what i'm going to be doing today it's actually not that hard the back of my o2 vic here it's not is low as some of like the 98 99s that I've seen, but it is starting to sag in the rear. Part number that I'll be using is right here. And this is just a set of springs from a 2006 to 2011 Crown Vic Police Interceptor. And they're a direct swap into the older cars because they have the same Watts Link solid rear axle suspension. It's actually not too bad of a project. We're going to jack up the back of the car, uh, put jack stands under the frame. You can't put the jack stands under the axle because we're going to have to let the axle drop. And then we're going to unbolt the shocks. And on a lot of these cars, just unbolting the shocks is enough. Definitely need to get the old springs out, but should be enough to get the new spring in without a compressor. All right, so I've got my jack stands under the rearmost frame mount before it gets into the suspension. So now I'm going to go ahead and let the axle down. All right. I'm gonna kind of work on one side at a time so you can, you can see our lower shock mount over here. That's the bolt we're gonna have to take out. And I'm going to leave the jack in place to support the axle so it just doesn't drop. I'm probably going to have to move it over a little bit further here in a minute. But for now, I'm going to get under there and get some PB Blaster on these bolts and get them, get them started. And it really is just that simple. Once the axle drops down enough, the spring will just, old one will just slide out and we'll get the new one in. All right, so from underneath... I haven't even taken the bolt out yet. You can already see the spring. It's pretty loose in here. I can almost turn it. At the top of the spring, there is a rubber insulator that will have to be transferred from your old spring to your new one. So don't forget to do that before you put it in. So I've got my jack under this side of the axle to support it. That's off. Let's push that out. Now I'm going to slowly release a little bit of pressure on my jack. You can see the axle's coming down. Bring out. There's our rubber insulator on the top, popped right off for me. All right. We'll put the insulator in the top. So if we compare them, it's funny the old one actually seems a little taller. Sure your insulator does not come off. All right. You want to make sure your insulator and the spring are 
in or wrapped around the little cone up there. And same thing back here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the rear end back up on this side. Making sure this stays centered. Then I'll put the shock back in place. Centered in, we'll go ahead and get this bolt back on. I said 11 16 when I was taking off, but 18 seems to fit a little better. 11 16 was a little tight, hard to get off. Press it a little bit. All right. Look up in there. Make sure your your rubber isolator is centered properly. So you definitely don't want to see that happen. You can see my shock just started leaking. So I guess it's time for a new pair of rear shocks while we're doing this. Alright, so to do the rear shocks, I already showed you how to get the lower bolt out. The top bolt is a whole nother pain in the butt. You can see right up in front of those lines, right in here, is the top nut for the shock. It can be a real pain in the butt. So where I'm at here, I'm on the passenger side. The driver's side is much easier than the passenger side, although it is still difficult. Here's the shock. Okay, and it bolts to the lower part of the axle here, and then it comes up, goes behind the frame, and just sticks up right behind these fuel lines here. And you have basically no room to get a wrench on there, and if you can get a wrench on there, when you try to turn the shock, it just spins. Uh, there's lots of different, you know, ways people go about this. But I found the easiest way when you're replacing old, worn-out shocks that you don't care about uh, keeping them, you know, intact, is to cut the top of the bolt off. On this side, it is challenging and dangerous because you have your fuel lines running right there and they're completely in the way. So the only way to really do this is to use a really long metal cutting sawzall blade. So in this case, these are 12 inch blades and you need 12 inch, nine inch is not long enough. Here's a nine inch blade. Okay, I was able to use it on the other side, but for this side, you really need a long blade because you have to get it in here. And how I did it was I went at this angle. Now it's hard to see, there's a little light with the fuel lines. So I basically, yeah, obviously you wanna be really careful not to hit nick the fuel lines with anything, but I just rode the fuel lines right on down there and cut the bolt. Once I had the bolt cut off, it basically, you can see what it looked like here. Okay. Well, then what I had to do was there was just a little sliver of metal still holding. You know, there's like another piece of metal that's on top of the rubber. that's on top of the shock. There's another piece of metal. And what I did was I took my air chisel. And you could use a good old-fashioned long screwdriver and a hammer to get the same effect. And I just put it on that metal piece that was up there. And that's just a quick, quick pull the trigger. And it blasted it loose, sent it flying, and then I was able to pull the shock down. And it's very easy to put the new one back in. It'll be much easier. The hardest part is just going to be to get your fingers back in here and get the nuts started. Uh, but on the new shocks that I'm using from AutoZone, you can 
just hold this part from below with your hand. That's why I took the tire off. And then use your wrench and just slowly spin that top nut down. So the secret, really, to sum it up, is use a really long sawzall blade, a reciprocating saw blade, and be very careful. Plan your cut and it pretty much destroyed this blade. I mean, I can still use all this down here, but, but it went through and I got it off. All right, well, that's all there is to that. I got that shock replaced. Got it back on the ground. Try to lay in a before and after picture. We're just a little bit higher than we were before, but the ride has improved significantly. It's a firmer spring, so it's not quite as bouncy. So that's all there is to replacing the rear springs on your Crown Victoria. Pretty much all years Crown Victoria since the beginning is the same procedure. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Like the video, subscribe for more Crown Vic and other automotive videos. Until next time, we'll see you later.